Before we get started, if you're enjoying this content, you can do us a favor by subscribing to our YouTube channel and ringing the bell. That'll let the algorithm know that you like this content and it will help us produce more. There are people that like to shop on Amazon. And there are people that like to buy brand direct. And there's not a whole lot you can do to kind of change your mind either way. Welcome to Honest Ecommerce, a podcast dedicated to cutting through the BS and finding actionable advice for online store owners. I'm your host, Chase Clymer, and I believe running a direct-to-consumer brand does not have to be complicated or a guessing game. On this podcast, we interview founders and experts who are putting in the work and creating real results. I also share my own insights from running our top Shopify consultancy, Electric Eye. We cut the fluff in favor of facts to help you grow your e-commerce business. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Honest Ecommerce. I'm your host, Chase Clymer. And today, we're welcoming the show the VP of Marketing at Pure Boost. She is responsible for scaling the Pure Boost business year over year since its launch in August 2018 to where it is today. Jillian Snyder, welcome to the show. Thanks, Chase, for having me. I am so stoked that I didn't stumble over any of those words during the intro there. That was a a long one for me. All right. So um, for those that don't know, let's just quickly let them know what is Pure Boost? What's like the products that you guys are bringing to market so they can kind of have an idea of where this is headed? Great. Yeah. So Pure Boost is a clean antioxidant energy drink mix. And really what that means is it comes in a little packet, you add it to water, and it gives you clean energy. Um, the energy comes from green tea, caffeine, B12. But then it has all these really awesome benefits as well. Electrolytes, tons of vitamins, antioxidants. Um, And so what it does is it gives you that really nice energy boost that most of us need to help us get through the day, but you don't feel bad afterwards. So there's no jitters, there's no crash, and you get all of the really great benefits of vitamins, electrolytes, and nothing dirty or bad getting put into your body. Absolutely. All right. So take me back in time. Uh, You've been with the team quite a while, right? Yep. Yeah. So really day zero. Um, we, when I first started, it was actually a brand incubator and we were looking for opportunities to launch new products in the Amazon marketplace. Um, and so we had launched a few different brands. We, my, my founders then synced up with our other now co-founders who were experts in the supplement space. And as we were looking one, just in terms of, okay, there is the energy drink space is actually very, very crowded. But we think there's opportunity there. And really where the idea came from is our founders were in a room and collectively between them, they have 15 kids. So everyone is very busy um, with work. We have professional athletes. Their kids are super active. We're all Southern California. So healthy lifestyle. Instead of reaching for a second, third, fourth cup of coffee that some days... um, needed, they said, Hey, we'd love to put some, like, take something else. How do we get this energy and still feel really good? And so they looked at what was there and really went out, bought all the product that they, they could find in stores today while also looking on um, online and laid them all out on the table. And when they separated them out, they said, Okay, well, here's what we would consider dirty energy or energy options that are not very good for you. And here's the clean side. And there wasn't a whole lot there. So that is really the genesis of Pure Boost. Um, So they worked together to create the formula and the product. And then I brought it to life on Amazon first. And just really quickly out of the gate, we saw our customers respond very, very well, or really the consumer, because at the time, we didn't have customers. Um, And yeah. They just took off from there. I feel like my trash can is probably an example of dirty energy <laughs> at this time. Uh-oh. We need to get you some pure boost. Yeah, we'll, we'll work that out after the show. <laughs> um, what I love about that, and what, a lot of times uh, I hear from people that want to be entrepreneurs, they want to get into the, the e-commerce space and the ideation phase is hard. And the, the people that are actively out there trying to find problems to solve is always interesting to me. And the, it's going out and looking at what's in the market and laying it all out in front of you and kind of visualizing it and seeing it. It's the first time I've heard someone say that. Um, and I think that's an awesome way to, you know, if you have a passion and some knowledge in a certain space, you know, maybe look at what everyone else is doing and maybe once you lay them all out there, you can kind of see what some opportunity might be. Yeah, I think it was really important for us again because the energy drink market is pretty 
saturated or it's, it's, there's a lot out there. Right. And so, um, we knew, and we also knew from the other brands that we had launched, it was really important to create something that was different and unique because me too products. I mean, we all know that, especially as, um, digital marketers and in the e-commerce space, it's, hard to acquire customers, right? It's expensive. And so you need to have something that is truly different that consumers are going to respond to. Absolutely. So you guys kind of found this product. Now, do you know how long it took from uh, you know that exercise of laying these products out on the table and seeing where the holes were to actually kind of having a sample? It was fast. I'm trying to... Man, it's like going back into the vault. Um, I want to say... I think we launched within... Eight months or so um, from getting the product, tasting it, and then developing the packaging, branding, everything. So it was pretty fast. Our our approach was get something out to market and test, and then continue to refine and build from there. And, and that's really what we had launched Pure Boost with that in mind. But that's how we've scaled and grown Pure Boost today. And on your kind of founding team, did you have anybody mm-hmm. that had experience in this space or had done it before to kind of help you uh, circumvent some of the trial and error of most startups? We had so we have a pretty uh, pretty packed, powerful leadership team. Um, half of them have been in the branding, um, Amazon digital marketing space for for years, and then the other half came directly from the supplement space. And so they combined forces. So we really had the best of both worlds to get this product to market. Um, But I think with anything, obviously not the product development side, but after that was done, it was really test and learn from there because everything's changing all the time. So um, testing our messaging, testing, I mean, our package, it's, it's subtle, but our packaging has changed every single round because we're constantly tweaking and learning from what our customers are responding to and how to get better. Yeah. I mean, this is just a product version of the Lean Startup. If anyone out there hasn't read that book, it's a fantastic book (laughs) to read. Yes. It's definitely more about starting a SaaS business, but you can translate over so much of uh, of what's in that book to starting an e-commerce business. Absolutely. It's funny. We actually... uh, I showed... Not the whole book, obviously, but um, I found this really cool video that summarized the lead startup and I ran it. We watched it with my team and it all to us. We're like, this is literally pure boost because one, like MVP, minimal viable product, minimum viable product, you have to start there because if you wait forever, you're not going to get those learnings quick enough to be successful. Um, but I think the most important thing is, and I've had to learn it as well, is being really adaptable and being ready to pivot because nothing goes exactly as planned. So really everything we did um, was get it out there, learn, do we stay on course or do we have to pivot and do something differently? Now, can you share any examples of some of those learnings or maybe a pivot that you remember from uh, this amazing ride? Yeah, let's see. Um, A couple things. One, with Pure Boost... This isn't going to be the best example of pivoting, but the biggest challenge that I found with launching Pure Boost was being an Amazon first brand. Nothing really works in the same way as I was used to coming from a traditional D2C e commerce background. And so everything that we would launch and try, um, s- some things worked really well, some things didn't, but I constantly had to assess the data that was coming in because we did, I didn't have that full funnel analysis that I was used to. And so I was constantly trying to reevaluate the information that Amazon gave me and how do I get creative with that data to, to create insights then to drive our next phase of growth or marketing, whatever it is. So that was one challenge. And then I think one of the biggest maybe pivots we had was as we grew, we started to understand who our target customer was more and more and more. And so things that we had been doing previously about our messaging that it worked pretty well, like t- enough to, to scale us a little bit. But what I found was our consumer was a little bit different than a typical energy drink consumer. Um, the energy space tends to be male dominated and, and a little bit younger in terms of age. Pure Boost was resonating with more of that average consumer um, and actually 
trended more female. And so once I realized that, we had to take a step back and reevaluate our marketing a little bit because we wanted to make sure that everything we did going forward now in terms of our messaging, any changes that we were doing kind of on the fly just to test and learn, now we could get a little bit more strategic with it. And so we knew that we wanted to actually purposely message that customer where in the beginning, it was a little bit of trying a lot of things just to figure out what worked, what stuck, what didn't, um, and looking at the data. And so that was pretty... I think it was a great part, like turning point in our company because it started to get him a lot, a lot less guessing and more strategic and purposeful in how we were going to scale the business from from then on. Absolutely. Now, you dove into kind of the Amazon <laughs> versus own website question before I could get there, but I do want to ask like um yeah. for you know, for the listener, could you quickly outline just from your opinion and perspective kind of like what are the pros and cons of starting on Amazon versus starting on say like a Shopify store? Yeah. Um, I mean, the biggest pro, the benefit of Amazon is you are capturing free traffic pretty quickly. I put free in quotes. Um, you know, nothing's free, but you can really get something launched and start to test it. It doesn't cost a ton of money. You can get actual eyes on your page um, without a huge, huge investment. Uh, if you launch on Shopify first, right? Like the number one question is how do you get people to your site? And um, advertising is only getting more and more expensive. So that's definitely a benefit of Amazon. Uh, the big downfall though is not having customer data. So it makes it really tough. And it's part of the reason why it took us so long to truly understand who our customers were. Um, if we had launched on Shopify first, right, you get one that full funnel that I had kind of mentioned. So someone clicked on this ad, visited this page, and did or didn't purchase. Um, we didn't have any of that. It was, okay, someone clicked on an ad. And so we had to make a lot of our decisions um, without that, that full funnel analysis. And then again, you lose all of that customer data. So you couldn't email customers. We weren't growing an email database right away. So we had to get creative and figure out how do we do that in parallel to our, to our Amazon business. Absolutely. And now you guys are kind of running both in parallel. Um, you know, how long did it... This is something I see with a lot of brands that start Amazon first is when they make the jump to their own website, mm -hmm. they don't get the same results and they're almost surprised. Yeah. So is there any sort of like level setting or expectations that you can put out there? Because you guys had a very successful Amazon business before you launched your own website. We did. So, you know, any advice or you could share around that? Yeah, it's tough. Um, I, you know, I, this is the pivot I should have hit on earlier. I had that same expectation um, of, oh, cool, we've been so successful on Amazon. D2C is going to be easy. And mm -hmm. when we launched D2C, it actually was. Um, our first couple months, it grew pretty quickly. And I mean, you should have seen the forecast I built out of how we were just going to be exploding on D2C in, in 12 months. Uh, but I quickly got came back to reality a little bit. Um, and yeah, we had to rethink how D2C and Amazon work together. And so what I what I realized is at the end, I think two things. One, um, there are two types of people. And someone said this to me actually earlier. And I, I listened, but it became really apparent. There are people that like to shop on Amazon. And there are people that like to buy brand direct. And there's not a whole lot you can do to kind of change your mind either way. And so once I really took that to heart, then instead of trying to think of, okay, I'm competing with my own Amazon business. I only want to sell on D2C. I realized I don't really care. Um, I want to grow the overall pie. So I'm not going to worry too, too much about where that order is placed. If I can incentivize them to place on D2C, of course, that's what I'm going to do because I'd rather have the order over there. But I also want people to purchase on Amazon because there's a lot of reasons and benefits for our business there too. So once I took that approach, things started to go much more smoothly. Um, we actually have a shop on Amazon button on our website because it, it helps us with attribution and better understand what our traffic is doing instead of just driving a bunch of traffic to our website, not being able to track them, have them leave and go buy on Amazon anyways. Now at least I can track it. And, and actually, Amazon gives us a kickback for that too. So there's a benefit. 
So it, it's, it, that was very interesting. <laughs> If you're struggling with scaling your sales, maybe Electric Guy can help. Our team has helped our clients generate millions of dollars in additional revenue through our unique brand scaling framework. You can learn more about our agency at electriceye.io. That's E L E C T R I C E Y E.io. Mesa is the easy to use answer for automating the everyday challenges of running a Shopify store. Find more aha moments when you're spending less time in the weeds and can focus on the bigger picture. With automations, you have all the power of code without the learning curve. You can easily customize how Shopify and your apps work with one-click integrations. From auto-tagging orders to sending order details to Google Sheets or Airtable, Mesa connects your data where it's needed most. To put it quite simply, Mesa is a better way to work. So find your peace of mind and kick up your feet with a simplified workload to manage the everyday stress of running your Shopify store. Search for Mesa, that's M-E-S-A, in the Shopify App Store and download the app today. Free plan available with no cost setup included. Q4 is the main event for e-commerce and DTC brands. All those months of preparation, managing inventory, and balancing your cash flow are about to pay off. But how can you use this holiday season as a springboard to make 2023 your best year yet? The answer is funding. Funding opens doors for your business. It enables you to place larger inventory orders, invest more in marketing, and ultimately grow your business. Plus, now is the best time of the year to secure funding as you can unlock the best rates. Revenue-based finance from Wayflyer is fairer, faster, and more flexible than traditional funding options out there. Get approved for funding in hours and cash in your account within days. There's no interest rates or personal guarantees, just one simple fee. Most importantly, you keep full ownership of the rocket ship of a business you've worked so hard to build. To learn more about funding, from Wayflyer and how you can unlock growth for your business and turn the main event of Q4 into a record year in 2023, visit wayflyer.com slash ecom slash honest. That's wayflyer.com slash ecom with two M's slash honest. Wayflyer, funding a better way. Our partner Rewind can protect your e-commerce store by automatically backing up your business critical data. Rewind should be the first app you install to protect your store against human error, misbehaving apps, or collaborators gone bad. It's like having your very own magic undo button. Trusted by over 100,000 businesses, from side hustles to the biggest online retailers like Nix, Paul Mitchell, and Pampers. Best of all, visit rewind.com slash honest e-commerce to get your first month absolutely free. That's rewind.com slash honest e-commerce. Getting an online business off the ground isn't easy. So if you find yourself working late, tackling a to-do list that's a mile long with your fifth cup of coffee by your side, remember, great email doesn't have to be complicated. That's what Klaviyo is for. It's the email and SMS platform built to help e-commerce brands earn more money by creating genuine customer relationships. Once you set up your free Klaviyo account, you can start sending beautiful branded messages in minutes thanks to drag and drop design templates and built-in guidance. And with e-commerce specific recommendations and insights, you can keep growing your business as you go. Get started with a free account at klaviyo.com slash honest. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash H-O-N-E-S-T. We talk a lot about driving traffic. Uh, and so the audience always wants to know kind of like, what are you guys doing now? Like what where are you kind of focusing your time and energy and even money investment as far as like advertising goes? Yeah. So we had changed our approach quite a bit for this year compared to um, to last year. So 2020 and 2021 was all about growth, 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 getting produced in front of as many customers as possible. Um, I don't want to say no matter what the cost, but we were much more aggressive. This year, we really wanted to take a step back and focus on profitability um, so that we are creating a very scalable business that ultimately will will make money, right? Um, so we pulled back a little bit on the advertising side. And really, it's been D2C. For us, it's so much more efficient to capture customers on Amazon that I'm spending most of my budget there. But I, obviously, you can't ignore D2C, right? There's so many important aspects. And we have been really successful on D2C with getting Amazon customers over to D2C to sign up for a subscription. So that's a really important part of our business. 
But what we're doing, which is super exciting this year, is we're actually expanding out to retail. And so we wanted to make sure as we're thinking about profitability and growth, that we're saving budget to also help drive our retail partners because we know long term that we have to win there as well. And so we're just trying to be very thoughtful about our budget. So um, I actually pulled back a lot, especially with the iOS changes on Facebook marketing, like probably 200% um, to really focus on our, our top channels for now. And again, the, the big retail play that is hitting for us in, in Q3 and Q4. Absolutely. Now, this is a little bit of a pivot of a question, but I yeah. believe you're going to answer this. I, I think I know how you're going to answer this. I think the theme of this podcast might be pivoting. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. So you guys have, uh, you guys have an amazing Amazon presence. You guys have found ways to win on your own website, but you have a very low SKU count, right? You technically, you have three products and a water bottle, right? Mm -hmm. um, the water bottle, I would argue, isn't actually a product. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Why? Why not make more products? Why? Uh, why such a low SKU count? Great question. Um, really, it comes down to cash flow. So it is expensive to launch a new product because you have to... There's minimums, right? And you don't always know how customers are going to respond. Um, we have found that our Hero product, Pure Boost Original, the original line that we launched, um, continues to outsell anything else that, that we launch. So it's not to say that we... Um, don't want to innovate, but we're hyper, we're super focused on what is going to help us scale and meet our company goals. So our goals really are growth um, in a way that is efficient to help us again with that profitability um, and then retail overall, because we know that's going to be, be super important to our business long term. And so it really came down to where do we want to spend our cash? And it was on that. So and we, we haven't... Yeah. No, that's a fantastic answer. And I think that a lot of young entrepreneurs always go immediately to expanding the product line. But I think that mm -hmm. the more mature play, maybe it's the wrong terminology, but it, it's like you... You know, there's always this shiny object syndrome and the, the new stuff is always exciting. Yes. But it's like you yeah. rarely have actually capitalized on how many customers are out there to acquire or really honing in on your profitability. And you know, there, there's always the one or two products that are the ones you should actually spend all your time and energy on, on building out those funnels and the retargeting and all of that. Exactly. Awesome. Now, is there anything I forgot to ask you about that you think would resonate with our audience today? I don't think so. I, the one thing that I would just expand upon that you actually um, just mentioned was shiny object and focus. That to me, as you're growing a business and scaling, that's one of the biggest challenges because there's already always new marketing tactics and new tools. Uh, you can't say yes to everything. And, and a lot of times, it's not always the best thing for your business or, or at, the, at that moment. And you cannot be afraid to say no. I've had to go back to our founders even and say, that I cannot do that right now because we have limited dollars and limited time too, right? Like I have a really amazing team and in startup, small company, high growth, there's always more to do than, than what you have time in the day. So I also want to keep my team focused on what matters most, what's going to truly help move the needle on our KPIs, the things that matter than something else that sounds really fun and exciting, but isn't truly going to contribute to growth, retention, um, or brand development. So staying focused is, is hard. <laughs> it's it's really hard. And this is I, when our business changed over here, like at the agency was we read the book Traction by Gino Wickman. And it changed how we thought about business and really helped us curb the uh, shiny object syndrome because you basically mm -hmm. aren't allowed to make it important. And then it usually falls off and it becomes unimportant if you actually follow the system. Oh, interesting. I'm going to have to to read that book. Yeah, it's not my favorite business book. It's definitely a little <laughs> more dense than others. Uh, I'm definitely I'm a, I'm a sucker for like the allegory type business book where it's like a story as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had um, a teacher once tell us that any business book can be read in 15 minutes. So you can kind of skip through the fluff or the 
the 20 page outline of scientific background as long as you get the gist and get the major takeaways. So <laughs> absolutely. A lot of it's reiterating the concepts just to, to make sure they drive it home. Yeah. Uh, Jillian, thank you so much for coming on the show today. We talked so much about these awesome products. If I want to go check them out, obviously I need to. Where should I go? Well, Amazon, of course, um, but also purebeast.com. So um, yeah, I guess if you want to buy it, buy from purebeast.com. We have great deals there. And then what's really exciting is we will be in Walmart um, in the fall. So I'm super excited about that. And some other retailers coming soon. So keep your eye out for Purebeast on um, shelves. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, Chase. All right. I can't thank our guests enough for coming on the show and sharing their knowledge and journey with us. We've got a lot to think about and potentially add into our own business. You can find all the links in the show notes. Make sure you head over to honestecommerce.co to check out all of the other amazing content that we have. Make sure you subscribe, leave a review. And obviously, if you're thinking about growing your business, check out our agency at electriceye.io. Until next time.